Coming up on the Ed Show, opponents of the Florida Stand Your Ground law spoke of the dangers back in 2005. For, former Florida State Senator Dan Gelbert joins me. And also Mitt Romney can't blame the president for run, ruining the economy. So instead, he's crediting the men who got us into this mess. And it's considered one of the most important races this November. I'll talk to Tammy Duckworth, the candidate facing Illinois Tea Party Congressman Joe Walsh later in this hour. And you are looking live at 30,000 people who are protesting in Sanford, Florida. We'll have more on that protest and more discussion about the tragedy unfolding in Florida. Share your thoughts with us on Twitter using the hashtag Ed Show. We'll be right back. Reverend Al Sharpton spoke earlier tonight at the rally in Sanford, Florida, and we'll have some of that later on in the show. Here it is. Trayvon could have been any one of our sons. Trayvon could have been any one of us. Trayvon represents a reckless disregard for our lives that we've seen too long. And we come to tell you tonight, enough is enough. Welcome back to The Ed Show. That was Reverend Al Sharpton at the rally today of Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida, and just moments ago. The terrible effects of Florida's Stand Your Ground law have been mounting, and they were predictable. I'm joined tonight by Dan Gelber, former Florida state senator and former federal prosecutor. Mr. Gelber, appreciate your time tonight. I want your response to what you're seeing on TV right now, that live shot of 30,000 people in response to the murder of Trayvon Martin and also the conversation surrounding this law. What are your thoughts when you see that crowd? Well, first of all, we have to understand that, you know, behind everything, there's a family that lost a child. The child was, was killed uh, unnecessarily, unfairly, and, and now they're upset because uh, there doesn't seem to be justice available for this horrible act. And that's what the, the frustration is, and it's absolutely understandable. Uh, we're, a, we're a nation of laws, and the idea that our laws are such that that act of, uh, of aggression is not going to be vindicated in the courts possibly is upsetting people, and absolutely understandably so. What do you think of the law now? Did you feel before it was passed that we were going to have instances like this? And since we have seen it pass in 19 or 2005, there have been 93 cases resulting in 65 deaths. Well, I, I was a federal prosecutor. I also come from a family of prosecutors. My wife's been one uh, federal prosecutor for 20 years. So, uh, you, but you don't need to be in law enforcement to know that when you tell somebody you can be uh, stupid and irresponsible and malicious, and and uh, so long as you say you felt like you were being attacked at some point, you can do whatever you want. And that if you give uh, if you give people that license or ticket to act stupidly or venally or what have you, that this was going to happen. And those of us that did not support this, and there were 20. Uh, House members, and I was in the House at the time the Senate passed it unanimously, we said this was going to happen. We said uh, we're telling people uh, that you're going to, you can do whatever you want, so long as you say to somebody later that, oh, well, I, I thought I was in danger, so I used whatever force I felt necessary, uh, you can get away with murder. And that's literally what's been happening in Florida. Uh, and frankly, for a, a legislature that constantly claims that they value life, this uh, provision, this stand your ground provision, endorses behavior that absolutely devalues life. Well, what do you say to your former colleagues who are in the legislature in Florida? Do they need to address this? Do they need to repeal it and start over? Uh, I, I think they'd be uh, incredibly obtuse if they didn't uh, go back in a special session, and they, they were in one today, by the way, and, and address it. The governor was, uh, was, to, was a little bit late, but at least he realizes uh, that there are th tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Floridians who are aghast at what is playing out here. I I wanna, I Mr. Mr. Gel Mr. Gelber, I want to ask you, there's been a lot of talk about the NRA and their lobbying efforts. What instances uh, took place that forced the legislature and Governor Jeb Bush at the time to sign this law? I mean, were there a bunch of killings that people had to be armed, or was this really the work of ALEC uh, well, and, and the National Rifle Association lobbying just because they wanted people to have firearms? 
Listen, the NRA is a victim of their success in that they have won all the major battles, so they look for these fringe issues now. I asked this during the legislative session when it was passed. Every single person in support of it, I said, give me the single person in Florida, just name one, who has been unfairly charged, unfairly convicted or acquitted uh, because they uh, you know, used defense when they, uh, and they didn't have the protection of, of the Stand Your Ground bill. There was not a single instance in Florida of a single person person suffering in any way. This was a solution in search of a problem, and the predictable and unfortunately unintended consequences are what we're seeing right now. A, a, a man who potentially is going to have a defense uh, for the horrible slaying of a child. You speak volumes, Mr. Gelber. I appreciate your time tonight on The Thank Ed you. Show. Thanks so much. You're a great resource. We're going to want to come back to you. Speaking common sense to a very tragic situation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, Mitt Romney giving W credit for saving the economy. He must really want us to forget about the Etch-A-Sketch controversy. And later, Jeb Bush has plenty of time to talk politics, but hasn't taken a stand on Stand Your Ground, a law he signed as governor of Florida. Stay tuned. You're Watch The Ed Show on MSNBC.